Hi and welcome to Sounds Heavenly. Today we're going to take a look at how you can use digital signal processing to improve the sound of your Bang & Olufsen speakers and the results can actually be quite dramatic. So today we're going to show you how you can improve the sound of your B&O speakers by using technology known as digital signal processing or DSP for short. But first let's take a little step back and explain what DSP actually is. Now I guess most of us have watched old movies where a submarine commander has been staring intently at a little round screen um, trying to work out if the blips he hears on his sonar are an attacking enemy or just a shoal of fish. Um, or maybe you've seen old footage of air traffic controllers looking at their, the little uh, round radar displays and tracking planes trying to work out uh, the best approach for getting them into land. And if so, you're looking at the two main reasons why DSP was really developed. DSP is, is basically a system of calculations that allows a computer to manipulate data in different ways that couldn't be done easily um, in your head or on paper. So for those two examples I mentioned, modern sonar and radar systems use DSP to actively tell the operators about the size, shape and speed of the obstacles they're viewing. And it's done by intelligently translating the data into different uh, formats. So when I studied DSP at university back in the early 1990s, um, this was pretty much the sum total of the uses of DSP at the time. However, in the intervening years, things have changed enormously. So for example, if you've got an HD or 4K television and you want to watch an old movie or even a standard definition channel, your TV will be carrying out DSP live as you watch by um, adding in the missing pixels that are not there in that low definition movie uh, footage. So it will be working out on the fly which um, of the extra dots in your high definition screen should be filled in in particular ways at particular brightnesses to match their surroundings. And also in audio, DSP can have similarly big um, parts to play. Bang & Olufsen have quite a history of DSP in speakers going back to 2003 when they introduced the groundbreaking BLAB 5. Now this had a number of innovations that meant it's still a superb speaker and the one particular spark of genius that we want to look at today was the use of DSP. So BLAB 5 had a little microphone in its base that you could press a button on top of the speaker and the microphone would extend from the speaker. The speaker would emit some bass tones and then at about six or seven preset frequencies and across the bass um, spectrum, the, the speaker would then adjust its output to suit the room that it was in. And this gave you a speaker that sounded anecdotally perfect at pretty much any volume and in pretty much any environment. And what we're going to look at today is a fairly easy way to retrofit very similar technology to almost any B&O speakers. DSP, I should add, has a lot of capability. It can go far beyond what BLAB 5 pioneered and indeed BLAB 50 and BLAB 90 BNO's latest flagship speakers use DSP to a far greater effect. Whereas BLAB 5 altered purely the volume of particular frequencies to adjust to the room, the new flagship speakers can adjust the phase of the speakers, which is the timing of particular sounds, and also sense for obstacles, walls, ceilings and floors within the room and adjust the direction of sound as well digitally. So we're not, in this video, going to go to that sort of depth. That's rather advanced. And what we want to do here, if you like science fiction movies, I'll give you the little analogy in The Matrix, when Neo meets Morpheus um, for the first time and um, Morpheus tells him about the, uh, 
the new the the real reality that more, uh, to Neo hasn't woken up to yet. He gives him a choice: take one of two pills. Take the blue pill, you'll wake up. You you'll never know that this ever happened. But take the red pill. We'll give you the truth, and you'll find out just how deep this rabbit hole goes. That's my aim today: to give you that choice. If you find out after this video that DSP isn't for you, the complexities just don't spark any interest, then you can go back to listening to your system and enjoying the sound you have. However, if it sparks an interest and you think this is something you want to start researching a bit more, this video aims to give you the red pill to say that you now hopefully will be equipped and informed to know how to navigate the rest of the DSP rabbit hole and to understand a bit more about how to get the best from your system. So without further ado, let's look at a few bits of hardware that we're going to add in to your existing system to get the best improvement to the sound, but at the minimal cost. So first of all, Windows laptop or PC, it can be an old one, it doesn't have to be anything high spec. That's going to do the digital signal processing room measurement microphone. I use the £30 Behringer ECM8000, which is absolutely brilliant. This is not a normal microphone. This is specifically for measuring room acoustics, and it has a completely flat frequency response, which makes it ideal for this job and gives you far better results. However, the downside is it needs what's called phantom power. It needs um, an audio interface or mixer to provide it with at least 15 volts. So for that, I recommend adding, again, about £30, the Behringer Zenix 302 USB, which is a little um, podcasting mixer. I'll put links to these in the description. But around about £60 plus a spare computer, and you're good to go. We're going to use two pieces of free um, shareware software, which are readily available online. So to tell you just a little bit about what started this search for me, um, this room is terrible for acoustic. It's exactly 2.5 meters wide, 2.5 meters deep, 2.5 meters high. So it resonates at exactly 69 hertz, which is a sort of D bass tone. And that means that any sound I produce from these speakers, whether it's music or movies, is overshadowed by this terrible, over present bass and now I've corrected it so I'm going to show you how we did that and let's see if the technology will let me do this we have the first piece of free software that I've downloaded which is called Room EQ Wizard or REW for short after plugging in your mixer a microphone to the computer and then plugging in your speakers to the output of the mixer which I can help you with cables for that if uh, you've got any questions. Um, you'll be met with a pretty much a blank screen as you see here. And I'm going to walk you through what I did to get my measurements. The di diagram that we'll show you in a moment will give you just an indication of how the, the system will work once you've done the measurements. Basically, if you already use the computer as your music and movie source, then no changes are needed other than um, to pop in the, the mixer and connect your speakers via that. If you use um, a BNO TV or music system, then drop me an email via the link in the description. I can help you with the cables and the computer will basically sit between your TV or music system and your speakers. Once you've done your DSP calculations, then the sound that you, your music and movies produce will route through the computer. The computer will intelligently adapt the sound, send it to your speakers, and that, that will be permanently in place. So again, let me know if you've got any questions about the cabling and connections you need for that. My day job when I'm not making these videos is sorting out the connections for BNO. So happy to help. We're going to start by clicking on the measure tab on the left 
and once everything's connected, first thing we're going to do is check the sound. Make sure that your speakers are producing sound on command. So they can, when we click the check levels button, we're going to get a noise burst, which may be quite loud, so be ready to turn your volume down and adjust. And we want to get the volume to, until it says OK. Brilliant, so we're showing minus 12 decibels, which is OK anywhere. Minus 10 to minus 20 dB is perfect. So what we're going to do next is um, we're going to check that we're, you, you should have these settings as standard, but if not, please adjust them to what we have here. 20 hertz to 20,000 or 22,000 and one sweep. Don't worry if the information comes at you a bit hard and fast here. I'm going to put timing links in the video description so that you can easily go back to the points in the video you need. And we click start measuring. Now that tone is basically the uh, a swept frequency. The computer then sends out in the same way as a sonar um, on a submarine, sends out the sound, listens for the reply, and compares the two. And the differences in the two tell the computer what the room and the speakers are doing that's interfering with the sound. Now, for the purposes of this video, my speakers weren't running there. So that is just an internal loop within the computer for a, a starting point. So we're going to replace that with the proper measurements that I took previously. So you'll see immediately that uh, problem that I mentioned a, a moment ago. The huge spike there at exactly 69 hertz is the room's sonic signature. That be means basically any sound at that pitch echoes exactly the waveform bounces back and forth across here. The room acts as a huge horn and amplifies that sound, which completely overshadows everything else the speakers do. So what we did, I took a, a load of readings at the position where I normally listen. So I got myself out of the way, got the microphone here at ear height and took about half a dozen readings. Each time moving the microphone very slightly, left, right, forward, backward, up, down, to get an average response. Once you've got a number of traces, you can click at the bottom of the screen here, average the responses, and then delete everything except the average. So this is the result really that we had. The, this is the average response. So the aim of what we're going to do, try and do now is to correct this. Now, there are a lot of tutorials on Room EQ Wizard, so I'm not going to go into the full detail here. What we want to, to show you really is just briefly how we can, what results we can get when this is done. And then I'll give you a quick skim through and some suggestions on resources to look at so that you can delve a bit further. So basically to using the, uh, the uh, matrix analogy again, so we'll, we'll show you your route down the rabbit hole to learn this further. So what we're going to do is show you the EQ settings that I got. And here we are. If you want to compare the two, after equalization, you see that we've got an almost exact flat frequency response. I should note that there's a peculiarity of human hearing that means that those little two particular dips that you see on the left side of the graph aren't particularly audible. Our ears are great at filling in things that are missing from sound. So if you do get a slight dip in the response at one particular point, your ears won't know. I'll leave it up to you to decide how um, detailed you want to be at getting those out of the response, those dips. But they won't, trust me, they won't remove the quality of the sound. What does have an issue is where you have the spikes, the overblown boost of sound at a particular volume. So removing those is the key. And looking at the All SPL tab here, this is the, 
the key to the data that we're going to use. You'll see we've got a nice flat response. And what we did to get that is we told Room EQ Wizard using the EQ tab here to make some filters. So basically to act as a big graphic equalizer. If you want to delve even further into DSP, you can look at the phase and timing of the sound. That will generate further improvements, but they're a step down from the improvements you'll get normally by adjusting the sound pressure level. So what we've done here is we've initially set a target level for the, um, the output. We've told it to generate some filters which overall should have no um, additional boost to the sound. I'd set a fairly low level for individual boost of about 6 decibels so that no particular filter is turning up the sound. You don't want any spikes in the sound, you want them to be fairly even. If they dip down, that's okay. And a flatness target, the lower the better, that's going to help flatten that frequency response from low pitch to high. Once that's done, we match the response to target. Because I'm working on sample data here, I'm seeing an error that you won't normally see. The computer will churn through and optimise and just as in the, in the 1980s every stereo system had a huge long graphic equaliser with loads of sliders or dials to pitch each um, particular tone, the computer's done that for us. It's tailored our own graphic equaliser, which we can now export the filter settings and I suggest we save them as a text file somewhere accessible on the hard drive because we're going to need them in a minute. And the, the way we're going to use them is in our second piece of free software, which is called Equalizer APO. And again, I'll link this in the description. What this does is this picks up those filters that we generated in Room EQ Wizard and then sits passively in the background and applies those to any sound your computer passes through it. So that can be either live streaming that you're doing, say on YouTube, directly on the computer, or any sound that's input to the sound card and sent out to the speakers. And what I've done here, there is, um, this is the um, control panel for Equalizer API, which is fairly basic and straightforward. It works on um, one particular file on your hard drive, which is, um, you, you'll see here, it's in, it normally uh, saves by default in your C drive in a folder called Program Files, Equalizer APO, Config, and then the file itself is called config.txt. If we open that up, it, to start with, it will contain all sorts of gibberish. And really, all you want to add in there is hash, include, colon, and then the name of that file you just saved from Room EQ Wizard. So for me, it's computer.txt. Here, you'll see I've actually included a second equalization file, movie.txt. So basically, if of an evening I want to sit back and relax and watch a movie on the big screen, I actually sit about two feet bit further back. And that changes the sonic characteristics of the room. So I've got a separate option there that lets me change the sound if I'm leaning back to watch a movie. So you'll see that that uh, changes if I move this out of the way. Back into Equalizer APO I have here the two options and I, with the power buttons I can turn them on or off at will. So with both of those off the computer is not affecting the sound. If I sit here, listen to music, I've got that horrible bass spike. As soon as I turn on the option Computer TXT, that's smoothed out. And if I want to sit further back in the room and watch a movie with that lovely projector that's up there, I switch on Movie.txt and that gives the equalization for the position back here so that I can watch a film. And it literally is that simple. This well, so apologies, 
that was flippant. You'll see from the length of the video, this isn't simple, but in terms of the DSP I studied as an electronics student years ago, this is comparatively very, very straightforward. The only issues really are a bit of hardware setup and navigating your way around a couple of pieces of free software. It's not for everybody, but if you fancy a bit of exploration and to be honest, what is quite an enjoyable process, then I'd suggest this is worth a try. If you've got any questions, particularly if you want help with the connectivity to get your speakers set up for a simple DSP analysis, please get in touch. At my day job is at soundsheavenly.com is making the cables to make this work. So please ask with any questions and uh, by all means, as this is a starting point, have a search around on YouTube. There are lots and lots of videos covering Room EQ Wizard, Equalizer APO, and also some of the all-in-one box DSP solutions, such as Mini DSP, which I've heard good things about, but I have not tried myself. So enjoy, and by all means, have a listen, if you get the chance, to some of BO, the BO Lab 5, 50 or 90 speakers and hear just what DSP can do and I think if that inspires you then uh, as it's inspired me that will be a great thing. Thank you for watching.